Hi, in this video, we are going to have a quick look at what do we mean by forward rate agreements and how we can value forward rate agreements. So this is part of FRM part one, book three, which is titled as financial markets and products and forward rate agreements are part of the chapter titled properties of interest rates. So when we talk about forward rate agreements, let's look at a simple example to understand the concept. So here we have firm A which is entering into a contract with firm B. Now firm A has agreed to pay a fixed rate of interest which is 2% in one year for a three month period on a notional of 50 million US dollars. Now in exchange, firm A will receive the three month LIBOR interest rate effective in one year's time for three month period on the same notional which is 50 million US dollars. So why would firm A do this? Now let's assume that firm A has another commitment to pay LIBOR interest rate for three month period on a 50 million notional. Now of course firm A's biggest worry would be what will happen if the three month LIBOR in one year's time really increases let's say to 5% or 6% then the interest expense is going to be very high. Now in order firm A to protect itself, what firm A has done is it has entered into a forward rate agreement to pay 2% and receive the 3 month LIBOR. So what this means is that if the 3 month LIBOR really increases, let's say to 8% for example, firm A can still fulfill its commitment to another party, let's assume to another bank by because the firm A will receive that 8% LIBOR from firm B and just pay it off. So firm A's effective cost will be simply 2% on $50 million. So that's, that's what firm A is doing. So you enter into a forward rate agreement, especially in order to hedge interest rate risk. So that's just, just a overview just for you to understand why someone would enter into a forward rate agreement. So let's look at how you can value a forward rate agreement. So in this example, let's assume that you're here. So in other words, you, you just entered into the agreement today, your firm A, so you're just here. So remember, you entered into a forward rate agreement where you will exchange interest payments that's effective during this three month period that starts in one year's time. So on the day you enter into a forward rate agreement, the value of the FRA is zero. It's, it's similar to any other derivative on the time you enter into a transaction, the value of the derivative is zero. In other words, it's a fair deal for both parties. In this case, it's a fair deal for firm A and firm B. That's what we are saying. The, the value of the forward rate agreement on the day you enter into the transaction is zero. So now let's assume that you have moved one year. So you're somewhere here now. So in one year's time, let's assume that the three month LIBOR is 2.5%. So remember we said the contract says that firm A will be paying 2% on 50 million and receiving the three month LIBOR that's effective in one year's time for three month period on the same notion which is 50 million. So now we have come here and the three month LIBO is 2.5%. So you can see here that A is going to receive more interest than what it's paying. It's going to pay 2% but receive 2.5%. So let's calculate the interest payments. So firm A remember will is paying 2% fixed rate. So the notional is 10 million. Now in, in the previous slide, we showed the notional as 50 million, but um, just for calculation purposes, let's assume the notional is 10 million. So the notional is 10 million, and then we multiply that by the fixed interest rate, which is 2%. And remember, the payments are for three month period. So that's what we are multiplying by three by 12, because the 2% is an annual interest rate. So it's three into three by 12 that gives us $50,000. So firm A has to pay $50,000 to firm B and firm A will receive 
10 million dollars that's the notional multiplied by 2.5 percent the three month LIBOR we said is 2.5 percent multiplied by 3 by 12 remember 3 by 12 is because it's only for three months so that gives us 62,500 so what will happen is of course a will not pay 50,000 and receive 62,500 from b they'll just exchange the net amount so the net amount is 62,500 minus 50,000 which is 12,500 so firm b will pay firm a 12,500 because that's the net amount remember firm a has to pay 50,000 to firm b and firm b has to pay 62,500 to firm a so both parties will just exchange the net amount which is 12,500 which will be paid from b to firm a now there are some few details that you need to understand when we are trying to value a forward rate agreement so the first point is that payment normally should be made at the end of the three month period so payment normally should be made here but by convention in other words the standard practice is that it's paid at the beginning of the three month period so it's paid somewhere here at the beginning of the three month period so what we are saying is even though normally you should make payments at the end of that interest period by convention both parties can exchange payments at the beginning of that interest period so what that means is we said the net amount is 12,500 if you remember the difference is 12,500 which firm B should pay firm A normally at the end of the interest period but if we are exchanging it at the beginning of the interest period which is this here you have to discount this cash flow and then exchange the value so that's what we are showing here so the payment is 62,500 minus 50,000 which is 12,500 you need to discount that by the LIBOR rate remember you have to only discount it for a three month period now this interest is with quarterly compounding this interest payment interest rate is with quarterly compounding because these are this is a quarterly period this is a quarter three months is a quarter so this interest rate is with quarterly compounding so that's what we are dividing it by four one plus two point five percent by four and that gives us twelve thousand four hundred and twenty two dollars so that's the amount firm b firm b will be paying firm a $12,422 at the beginning of the interest period which is this here now of course if you want to calculate the present value you simply discount it to today remember that if you want to calculate the present value you simply discount it to today using the risk-free interest rate so let me just show you that to you in an example so let's assume a FRA was entered some time ago so we do not know when the forward rate agreement was entered between two parties but let's assume the FRA was entered entered some time ago to pay 2% and receive three month LIBOR for a three month period on 10 million dollars in another one year's time so remember this is not the time the FRA started the FRA was entered some time ago but you have another one year to go that's what we are saying we have another one year to go and then according to the contract we are going to exchange two percent to a three-month LIBOR for a three-month period so you have another one year to go and after another one year you're going to exchange two percent you're going to exchange two percent in exchange to that applicable three-month LIBOR on a 10 million notional now the three-month forward rate starting in one year's time is 2.8 percent with quarterly compounding so we have been told remember you're here you're here and you know that we have to exchange interest payments in one year's time that's applicable for a three-month period future three-month period but we have been given the forward rate the three-month forward rate so that's the three-month forward rate starting in one year's time it starts in one year's time is 2.8 percent with quarterly compounding 
and also be, we have been given the 12 month risk free rate is 2.2% with quarterly compounding. So the first step is to calculate how much will be the interest payment. Now remember we are not being given how much will be the realized interest the realized three month LIBOR interest will be when you're here. Now that you will only know when you come here but at the moment you're here. Remember the question says the FRA was entered some time ago and now we, ha we have one year's time. We have another one year so we are here. So we, we don't know how much will be the exact realized LIBOR rate would be in one year's time. So in this case in order to value a FRA what we do is we make an assumption that's the reason I have highlighted this in yellow. We make an assumption that the forward interest rate is the realized interest rate. So remember that's an important point the forward interest rate. So in this case we have been told the three month forward rate starting in one year's time is 2.8 percent with quarterly compounding. So this interest rate we assume this is going to be the realized interest rate that means this is going to be the real interest rate in one year's time. Of course it might not be it might change but for valuation purposes we make that assumption. So now we will receive 2.8 percent and we have to pay 2 percent. Remember we have been told FRA was entered some time ago to pay 2 percent. So to pay 2 percent minus 2 percent and we are receiving 2.8 percent. So that's what we are showing here 2.8 percent minus 2 percent multiplied by the notional 10 million for a three month period. So we multiplied by 3 by 12. Now that will give us a number. Now remember this value will be exchanged at the end of the three month period but we said by convention the amount is exchanged at the beginning of the interest period. So you need to discount the value from here to here. So that's what we are discounting. We are using the three month forward rate which is 2.8 percent. So 1 plus 2.8 percent we divide that by 4 because remember this is with quarterly compounding and we are only discounting it for a three month period. So three month period that's what we are dividing it by four because there are four three month periods in a year. So this will give us the amount that should be exchanged at this point. But remember we are here. So we need to calculate the present value of the FRA that means we need to discount this 19,861 using the one year risk free interest rate and we have been given the 12 month risk free interest rate is 2.2 percent with quarterly compounding. So that's what we are applied here. So 19,861 and then we apply the relevant discount factor to calculate the present value and that gives us 19,430 dollars. So remember couple of things when you value a forward rate agreement we assume the forward floating rate is the realized floating rate in order to calculate the net cash flow. Once we calculate the net cash flow we first discount it to bring it down to the beginning of the interest period and then we use the risk free interest rate to discount it back to the present day in order to calculate the present value of the forward rate agreement. Now if you have any questions you can put it in the comment section or send us an email. And also remember for derivative questions the more you practice is better for you because in an exam setting it's very important that you have practiced quite a lot after you understand the concept so that you can get it right in an exam setting. Thank you.